Hello Mariners, how are you? I hope you are fit and fine. This is lecture 5 on boilers. In this lecture, we are going to study about different type of burners. Before starting the lecture, I hope you have already subscribed the channel. If not, please subscribe it right now. Please like the video if you got to know anything new and please comment below on any improvements if you find in my video. So let's start with our today's lecture on boiler burners. So before getting into the burners, let's study about some of the basics of the combustion inside the boiler. For combustion to happen inside the boiler, we need three elements to be there in boiler. First is air, which is present inside the boiler, which is given by the draught fan that is attached to the boiler. The second element that we need is combustion element that is itself fuel. And the third element that we need is ignition source that could be from the heat of the furnace or from the pilot burner. So combustion source. These are the three elements that is needed to be present inside the boiler for the combustion to occur. Now continuing with the boiler topic, <clears throat> first we need to know before sending the fuel inside the boiler, inside the boiler via burner, we have to first heat the fuel. For heating the fuel, you we heat the fuel to reduce the viscosity and to bring it up to a proper temperature so that it is easily combustible. Now up to what temperature we need to heat the fuel. So we need to heat the fuel up to its ignition temperature. But we cannot heat the fuel up to its ignition temperature directly inside our heater that is present before the burner when the fuel enters the burner. So how do we make sure that the fuel that enters inside the burner is at its ignition temperature. So before starting. I, I want to answer one question that the surveyor might ask you that why can't you heat the fuel directly inside the heater up to its ignition temperature. There are two answers to it. One, one that is when we heat up to such a high temperature then the fuel might leave some deposits on the tubes of the heater and that might lead to the effect called cracking. The second thing is that whenever you are heating up to its ignition temperature. Ignition temperature is the temperature at which the fuel starts to give out vapors. This is the temperature at which it gives out the vapor and the vapors get are higher in the volume and they get trapped inside the pipelines of the uh, of the fuel uh, inside the fuel line. As the result, the fuel is have faces the difficulty to flow within the line. And so the flow rate of the fuel that reaches the burner tip reduces. These are the two things because of which we do not heat the fuel inside the heater up to its ignition temperature. So <clears throat> we heat the fuel in the inside the heater 20 degrees less than the ignition temperature. So let me come to this diagram. <clears throat> this is the furnace. And this side is the atmosphere. Atmosphere. This you are seeing is the burner. I'll mark it here. Burner. This is the refractory of the boiler. It is even called qual. 
रिफ्रैक्टरी और क्वाल क्यू यू ए आर एल ओके सो दिस दिस एरिया दिस थिंग इज कॉल्ड वेन्स फ्रॉम हेयर we get secondary air inside the boiler that is secondary air and from here we get primary air inside the boiler this is primary air the function of secondary air is to pre purge and post purge the boiler so as after the ignition after the boiler uh, ignite ignition cycle is over at that time there are harmful uh, gases that are present in the boiler that needs to be removed after the boiler has done its job so that is done by the secondary air and sec even before the boiler is being fired the secondary air is come inside the boiler so that any harmful gases or the explosive gases if they are present inside the boiler they are to be removed just to make sure okay so this is a work of secondary air the work of primary air is to atomize the fuel that is coming inside the burner so now here the question is what is atomization atomization is basically nothing but atomizing the fuel fuel that is coming suppose it's coming as a volume so it needs to be divided so that it equally get mixed with the air inside the boiler and it is easily combustible so it gets divided into small small division up to its atomic level so that's why it divides up to the number of atoms so from there the term atomization came <clears throat> so that is the job of primary air now the fuel <coughs> fuel that is coming inside the boiler burner is coming from here let's suppose it is coming from here and now it is at the tip of the boiler tip of the burner from here the primary air will come it will get mixed with the fuel this burner could be of any type burner let's suppose it is a rotary cup burner okay it is coming inside here and the primary air is coming now the work of the primary air is to atomize the fuel okay now the fuel has been released out here 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 now here at this point the fuel is gets divided into two particles one is lighter hydrocarbon and one is heavy hydrocarbons heavy hydrocarbons would be in center and the lighter hydrocarbons will move away from the burner now these lighter hydrocarbons could be burned easily so they take heat either from the refractory or the coal or they can take heat or sometimes what happens that we are using the heavy fuel oil inside the burner so that cannot ignite itself as compared to diesel oil when we are using inside the main burner so for igniting the heavy fuel oil the heat is not sufficient from the refractory or the coal so we need additional heat source that additional heat source is pilot burner which is somehow attached to the boiler diagonally to the main burner okay so this is our pilot burner now the pilot burner is simple pressure jet fuel burner that we are going to study in our first type of burner okay this is supplied with diesel oil and in addition to that when the diesel oil diesel oil come out in spray from here so an electrode so the electrodes are provided here 
and the potential difference between the both electrode is 10,000 volts volts because of which it produces spark between these two electrodes and the diesel oil which is sprayed on top of these electrodes gets ignited and which passes the heat to our initial lighter hydrocarbons so these are the two ways ways by which the lighter hydrocarbons gets ignited we'll come to the pilot burner in detail later first we understand this okay so i will rub here so till now we have got to know that how our lighter hydrocarbons are getting the heat now these lighter hydrocarbons when they get ignited they pass the heat to the heavier hydrocarbons these hydrocarbons now at higher temperature as the temperature is increased so now they give up now they are up on their ignition temperature which we have discussed earlier so now they are reach, have reached out their ignition temperature and now they will give the lighter hydrocarbons out so <clears throat> the flame from this part up to this part where the lighter hydrocarbons are released and they get ignited and transfer the energy back to the heavier hydrocarbons this part is called primary flame so this is primary flame now this primary flame the work of the primary flame is to make the fuel to reach its ignition temperature now once the fuel is reached has reached its ignition temperature from here the carbons that we are going to get the fuel that we're going to get is lighter hydrocarbons because the fuel is already at its ignition temperature so the flame that is produced after this point is called secondary flame secondary flame now the work of the secondary flame is actually to heat the burn heat the boiler to increase the temperature of the boiler and to produce steam so the actual job that is being done by secondary flame now here we have one term called air fuel ratio now what is air fuel ratio air fuel ratio is the ratio of air to the fuel we have to maintain the air fuel ratio in the boiler what if the fuel is we put extra fuel and the air is less inside the boiler at that time we may get black smoke at the top of the furnace and what if air is more or the air or the fuel contains water in it at that time we will get white smoke in the furnace so this question also the surveyor can ask you so <clears throat> till now this was the basic of burners one more thing that i would like to <clears throat> add here the primary air that is coming inside it will come onto the onto the burner and <clears throat> here it is not a simple it does not go simply straight like this but it will give a turn to the air that passes the burner so the air including the fuel that is atomized if they turns in a clockwise manner from here they are turning in the clockwise manner so the secondary air that is being passed through the veins it would be veins would be angled at such a direction so that the secondary air rotates in anti clockwise direction so that proper fuel and air could be mixed together so the primary is making the fuel to atomize in the clockwise direction and the secondary air to be anti clockwise direction just opposite to the direction of the primary air so this was all the basics of the boiler burner i hope you have got it